I'm Blake. And I'm Cassie, and this is Sedona, our short school bus. She's a four window Chevy G3500. We're gonna give you a tour, let's go. So this is our outdoor table. We can fold it down whenever we wanna have drinks with friends. We love to cook on it outside as well. And here's our water tank. We hook a hose up to it outside. We have a 20 gallon water tank that's stored under our bed, so that's how we fill it. So we painted our bus blue. And we just use uh, Valspar exterior paint with a spray gun. We also have these screens that we made to keep the bugs out. We just got them at Home Depot, just like screen kits and put them together and put screen in there, made them to size. The paint took about two days, a lot of prepping to get like the black out and around all the windows. Back here we have our bumper extension where we keep our dual sport and our bicycles. We've got a ramp that pulls out right here. That's how we get the dirt bike down. We extended the bumper by just extending the chassis and welded it on. We just put decking up top. So we got this lock and load to keep the dirt bike secure. We've got our propane right here. We just strap it down after we're done using it. So we've got the dual sport as a second form of transportation so we can keep the bus at our campsite and take the bike into town or down to a trail to go hiking or wherever. You can also use the bike ramp and when everything's down, put it up there and against that black piece and use it as a ladder to get to the roof. So our front door used to open up on both hinges, but we welded them together and kept it on, on the one hinge. Uh, we have this little deadbolt that we used to lock it and we drilled these handles in. So we added this weather stripping here. There was a little gap and that keeps the air out, makes it whistle a little less than it did. We also use chalkboard paint on the inside of the door. We don't use it very often, but it's cool. We can write little notes and stuff. We're done with the exterior. Let's go inside and check it out. So this is our entryway when you first walk into the bus. Uh, the first thing you'll probably see is our shoe rack. We have a lot of shoes, so we needed somewhere really easy to access them. We also have our stairs. We used real tile for our stairs, which we don't recommend. Ours started cracking after a couple months of bus life. So this is our passenger seat. Our bus obviously didn't come with a passenger seat, so we salvaged this from an old van. I really like it because then me and Blake can always talk to each other and plan things out while we're driving and always have a passenger to co-pilot. One thing we really wish we had was a swivel seat, but obviously those are a lot more expensive, so if you wanted a cheaper route to still have a passenger seat, I would just salvage one from another vehicle. This is the cockpit of our bus. We obviously have the driver's seat and passenger seat. Pretty much everything here is stock from the original bus we have. We did install a backup camera and we do use this original compartment as kind of a toiletry cabinet. We did add the bookshelf and the hat rack and so we can store all of our books and all of our hats up front and along with a couple like sticky hooks. This is our privacy curtain for when we are closing up shop at night. We just have hooks that we screwed into the ceiling and we just used a shower curtain and put hooks into that so we just swipe it across the front to keep the back private. Coming into the kitchen here we've got our butcher block style countertop. Our cutting board comes out of the sink. Our faucet can go outside for a shower as well. We have our spice rack up here, a little like storage pantries. We built it super like budget friendly. We used a bunch of recycled materials. Like this came from an old desk and old cabinets and we just kind of pieced it together. Down here we have our gray water tank. It's just like a five gallon bucket pretty much. So we keep silverware, plates, pots down here. Got other just miscellaneous kitchen stuff. So back here we have our little greenhouse area where we keep all of our plants. We've got our mugs hanging from up here. We've got two outlets over here which we use to charge our phones when we're in bed. Our light switch is here for two lights that go above there. This is our on off switch for our water pump that's down there to turn the water on. Over here is this sort of like nightstand area and then our pantry that pulls out down there. We used a bunch of just sticks from my backyard and put it on here and give it a cool like cabin-y, outdoorsy feel. Our fridge is just 110 volt regular dorm style fridge. So we don't regret it at all. It doesn't really pull that much from us. Our power usually stays like above 80%. So we have 300 watts of solar panels up top that feeds into 400 amp hours of AGM batteries. 
which goes into a 2000 watt inverter that goes to our outlets, which are over there and some over there. We also have a DC to DC charger, which can charge our house batteries from our car battery when we're driving. We definitely recommend the DC to DC charger. It just keeps us topped off every time we're driving, even if there's no solar or no sun out, then we can just go for a drive and it'll charge us up a little bit. This is our living room part of the build. Uh, this is our couch. It has a few different functions. So obviously it stays in a couch position most of the time. It also can turn into kind of a desk. So we have a table that can screw into it that we store under the bed. That comes in handy when we're working on our laptops, but it takes up a lot of walking space so we don't use it very often. And then lastly, the couch can turn into a twin size bed. We just pull it out. We can put the cushions down and have any guests sleep on it if they'd like. And then it also hinges up for all of our solar storage and any tools that we have on the road. So we have one pillow that we store a lot of stuff inside. It just has a zipper on it and we can store all of our towels in there, our winter coats in there. And so it does provide us a pillow, but we usually use it more as storage. Next up, we have our upper storage. So we have upper storage all the way throughout our build. We also have this little shelf where we just keep little knickknacks and little things we need easy access to. So in our upper storage, we keep all of our clothes inside in the back, and then up in the front, we have our adventure gear, and then also use it as our pantry. We wanted to give these a little bit more character, so we did hollow them out and add burlap. It also kind of helps if you overflow them a little bit. It's a little more forgiving. So our ceiling, we made out of old pallet woods. We like tore them apart, sand them, stained them. We didn't add any extra insulation up there, which works fine for us. The only thing we do wish we had, though, is a fan up top that could bring in air and just keep more airflow. Over here, we didn't really know what to do with this space. It's kind of an awkward space. So we just kind of put a piece of wood like that and there's a little storage that we just kind of keep random stuff in. Down here we have our curtains, which are pretty much just normal like house curtains on a rod. We cut in half so it only goes down a few feet. For the sides, we put the pallet wood back on that too to give it a more like cabiny feel in here. Just get rid of some of the metal. So this is our bed. It's just fixed style because we knew we wouldn't want it folded up and down into anything every single day. It's just a normal queen size bed. Behind it here we have extra storage. So we built this to be kind of like a bed rest in case we wanted to sit up and do any work or watch a movie. It also folds up on hinges and this is where we keep our dirty clothes along with yoga mats and any other miscellaneous storage back there. And lastly, we have our pajama hammock back there. So it's just a bag we store our pajamas in. It's something easy to get to every single day. We can just throw it in there and not worry about it anymore. Under the bed is where we keep most of our storage. We keep things like our water tank over there, our helmets for the dirt bike, and just a bunch of other crap. We use this bungee cord to keep everything in because we don't have a door. We kept it that way though, so we can easily access everything. It's not the most aesthetic, but we definitely like not having a door here just so we can easily access everything. So this bungee cord right here is to keep everything locked up when we're driving. It keeps the fridge pretty good. This drawer used to have a little nub that went in there to keep it locked, but it broke it and didn't work very well. So this is really the only one that kind of slides around as we drive. This one's on magnets and it stays the same with this and this, they're on magnets that work pretty well. So for the floor, we just use tongue and groove wood style floor with a subfloor underneath and the pink foam insulation. And then on top of that is three quarter thick plywood. So when we decided we wanted to buy a bus, that was kind of my idea when I was in college. I just wanted a cheap way to travel as soon as I got out of college. And so we started building it our last year of college. It took us about a year, pretty part-time just on weekends. And then we were able to leave now we've been on the road seven months now, ever since December. We really enjoy this lifestyle. Don't really see an end date to it as of right now. The only thing that would change that is if we decide to travel abroad, but that would probably be a year or so down the road at least. My biggest piece of advice for people that want to start bus life is do your research. We didn't have much mechanical experience before the bus and it's definitely cost us. We'd also recommend getting as much water as you can, so a bigger water tank the better because that's always what we run out of first. And then lastly, I'd say definitely have a second mode of transportation. Our bicycles and our motorbike gets us anywhere we need that the bus can't um, because this can't go off-road like some of the more four-wheel drive vehicles can.
When it comes to the price tag on our bus, we bought it for about $3,000. We built it out really cheap. It was around $11,000 total with the bus and the build. But one of the things we learned the hard way was really set money aside for any mechanical work. Luckily we had savings, but within our first six months on the road, we spent another 11 grand replacing the engine and just between all the other mechanic work, getting it road safe, it's probably been about 15 grand of just mechanical work, which doubled the bus's price tag from our original plan. So that's really important. Save money if you're gonna do van life, it's not cheap. Why we chose a bus is because of the space inside. We can like stand up, dance around. It's also tall so I can stand up perfectly straight without hitting my head. It was also one of the cheaper vehicles we could find when we were doing research and checking Facebook Marketplace and auctions and stuff. And also just the look of it. It looks pretty badass driving down the road in like a short little school bus. <laughs> So our bus is really small, so we obviously can't have a full bathroom in here or a shower. What we do have is we use a sink head for a shower. We can just hang it out the window and use that. Personally, we really haven't used that ever. We just use Planet Fitness and whatever else we can find on the road. For bathroom situations, we actually just got rid of a bucket toilet that we used to have in here. We pretty much just use public places and outside whenever we can. We do have a pee funnel, which comes in handy if you are somewhere really crowded. But honestly, I don't think you really need a toilet if you are trying to keep the build really small. So if you're curious about bus life at all, definitely, we say go for it. It's an awesome lifestyle. Um, we didn't have any building experience or like much money or like a budget to put into a build when we first started. You just kind of figure it out along the way. If you have any questions, you can feel free to hit us up at Blake and Cassie on Instagram. You're watching the video, so you may as well do it. <laughs> We make money on the road through a few different outlets. Our main way of making money on the road is content creation right now. So we make a lot of content for other brands. We also make content on our own Instagram, but that's a little bit less monetized for us right now. Um, some other like small gigs we've done along the way, we've worked at expos and done little photography gigs we just find online. We've gotten some temporary work before, working at breweries or anything we can find when we're staying somewhere for an extended period of time. And then lastly, just selling everything before we went in the bus and even as we've been in bus life, just kind of downsizing and getting rid of stuff we don't use. We're Blake and Cassie. This is our four window short bus that we've been living in for the past seven months. If you'd like to check out our adventures, you can find us at Blake and Cassie on Instagram and YouTube. See you guys. See ya.